Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and the first of today's four tutorials looking at various lightning based effects right here in Photoshop Elements 10. Now first off, if you're a long time fan of the site then you may notice the image I have before me on screen. You may have seen it before and that's because it's the exact same image I used in my first ever video tutorial uploaded to YouTube exactly five years ago today. So in way of celebrating that day, I'm not only re-recording that video but turning it into a four-part mini-series looking at how we can set the mood of the image which is what we'll be doing in this video and then in subsequent videos we'll be making the lightning bolt itself adding it to the image and then creating some electrically themed text. So welcome and thanks for joining me. Let's go ahead and make a start. The image I have open in front of me is an image called Utah Valley which I shot about five and a half years ago on the scenic roads of Utah in the United States of America somewhere near Moab and uh, I remember our destination being Bryce Canyon so it was in between those two points. So the first thing we're going to be discussing in this video is the mood of the storm down there in the valley and if we're going to be adding lightning to the storm itself then we're going to have to stir it up a bit first so we're going to have to darken up some of these clouds and generally make the thing a little more grungier than it is right now. One thing to keep in mind when manipulating an image like this is that whatever we're adding, it really needs to fit in with its new surroundings. So how can we add some darkening to the storm? Well, we could use the burn tool and if you want to go that way then I have a video looking at the burn tool itself on my site. Just go ahead and do a search on the home page but I'm going to use an alternative method in this instance especially for this particular skyline I'm going to start off by creating a new layer in the layers panel so come over here and press this little new layer icon at the bottom left side of the panel go ahead and make sure that it's active by clicking on it now let's come over to the toolbox and grab the standard paintbrush we can also use the keyboard shortcut of uh, the letter B on the keyboard if we want to go that way. Once we have the brush active, whichever way we've decided to go, we need to make sure the foreground color is set to black. And if it isn't, we can hit this little reset button beneath the swatches just like so. Now let's adjust the brush to a workable size and I'll do that by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. Something like, something like that is what we're after. Finally let's make sure that we are working with a semi hard brush so come up to this little brush icon to the right hand side of the options bar and go ahead and click it and I'll come down to the hardness option and set this to 50% to add a little softness to the edge of the brush and I'll hit the enter key or the return key on the Mac to accept that change. Now let's go ahead and paint black onto the Utah sky just like so and I'm going to do my best to avoid the fields in the foreground or any of this mountain area. I'll focus exclusively on the clouds I think. I'll just finish up here as we paint round to this other side and that looks fairly good to me. Now I'm going to come back over to the layers panel and I'm going to change the blend mode of the layer from normal to the overlay blend mode which dramatically darkens the clouds and gives us this effect right here. Now what we can do is make any tweaks that we might want to apply and we can still do that by the way just by painting with the paintbrush onto the areas that we feel need more contrast. So I may just add a little more here but that's all I'm going to do. I think we've got ourselves a good starting point already. Now that's quite an aggressive modification you'll hopefully agree. So in order to ensure the image is portraying a more dark and moody look, I'm going to darken up some of these greens in the foreground and consequently affect the entire photograph. So come down to the bottom of the layers panel once again and click this little black white icon to add an adjustment layer and then go ahead and choose the levels option. That's going to open up the adjustments panel where we can change the levels of the photograph. Incidentally, if you'd like to know more about levels then you can go ahead and check out my five hour video series on the subject 
which I recorded in Photoshop CS3 a few years ago. It's not all going to be relevant to Elements users, but you will find a majority of the course really helpful if you want to move forward on the subject of levels. For now though, I'm going to move the black point up to a value of 25, which I'd say is going to properly expose the shot. And then once I'm happy, double click the Layers panel header and just move that back into position just so we can see all the various layers here stacking up. While I'm over here in the layers panel I'll rename the layers adjustment by just double clicking it and calling it something befitting like exposure and then I'll do the same for the layer below I'll double click that and I'll call it moody sky always a good thing to do when we're working with lots of layers which we will be by the time the third video comes along I can assure you of that for now though I'll press the tab button on the keyboard so we can get a good look as to what we've done so far in the second video released later today we'll be crafting the lightning bolts and adding it to the image but I think as far as setting the mood goes we've made a really good start here this is starting to look really neat Thanks for joining me. I'm extremely proud to be presenting this tutorial once again, exactly five years after releasing it on YouTube for the very first time. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.